thing, and we could start to spin this forward here for the Niners, is that like you, you even got, you even got the performance that you wanted from the the 49ers defensive line because when we're talking like mismatches coming into this game and again Nate Tyson I, I did broke all that down the one thing we probably didn't hit on enough is that if you get 100% out of the 49ers pass rushers that was such a clear mismatch over the Chiefs offensive tackles which have been like I said an up and down group all year so you even got that on offense you got Mahomes kind of uh, again the fits and starts from the Chiefs offense and you still couldn't get it done in this Super Bowl and that's why you're sitting here pointing fingers at Shanahan or pointing fi- like trying to cope with this that and the other Andy because again spinning this forward the reality here is I I don't like what w- like the conversation we have with the Chiefs where man they could do this on offense they could do this on offense like I think for the most part Andy in 24 this whole group is probably back Right. This whole group is probably back for another run. And when we're doing our fantasy projections, we're probably projecting them for, you know, about the same of, of what they did this year, because I like there's going to be a lot of teams probably calling the 49ers on Brandon Ayuk because he's on his fifth year option. He's woefully underpaid at 14 million on that on that option. But at the same time, a team in this much of a championship window, how much incentive do they have to trade him this year? Now, that being said, I think when we're looking at all of these guys, 24 might be the last time we're talking about all of them together, right? Um, I don't know about you, but I think there is a, what I just said about you probably being on this roster next year. Uh, if he's on this roster in 25 and 26, like there's a 0% chance that Kittle, Samuel, and Ayuk are all on yeah. this team, I think beyond the 2024 season. The math is just not going to math there. By the way, then we start talking about Christian McCaffrey. Like, how long can they do what they did this year where they just center everything around McCaffrey in the run game? Like, because he's going to get to that age where we start to worry about running backs. Shoot, Trent Williams. Guy's going to be 36 this summer, Andy. He's one of their, he's one, a legitimate weapon in the run game. I mean, even Kyle Juszczyk, like how long is he going to be around? That's the thing I start to think about. And then the Purdy discussion hangs over all this, which is, He's regardless of where you stand in the uh, annoying Brock Purdy wars, it's inarguable that for (laughs) what he gave them this year, he is one of the most the biggest values at the quarterback position because of how much he's getting paid. If they want to commit to him long term, he ain't getting paid to that. He ain't getting paid like that. Okay, not for much longer. So and, and even, by the way, Andy, all the things I just said there in 2024 simple variants might say that like not everything is going to run as smoothly as it did this year where you get like a perfect season out of IU. You you get a largely healthy season for as much as any healthy season is going to go for Debo. You know, you get McCaffrey firing off at at, at peak performance for the entire season. It's just, that's, that's what makes these moments so painful. So uh, I don't know, where do you kind of stand projecting this team in 24 and beyond? Yeah, well, I think you're. I think you're right that um, all the key pieces are are back next season. Um, I, Ayuk, I just thought like, you know, I was, I was pretty sold on Brandon Ayuk coming into this season, so I didn't need a lot of convincing. But just a, just an almost flawless season from him, and a again a, a brilliant Super Bowl that didn't really show up in the in the box score necessarily. I thought he was great. Um, it's. I, like this is this is maybe the second 400 touch season of Christian McCaffrey's career and that's you know he's uh, you know it gets you, you get you get old in a hurry in <laughs> in the NFL um especially on workloads like that and you know we talked about it with Pacheco there's all these brand name veteran running backs out there you wonder if like again there's going to be such a crazy game of musical chairs at the running back spot um maybe somebody tries to find their way to San Francisco as a, a as somebody who can fill the role that we you know we thought might be um destined for Elijah Mitchell this year where it's just you know a little bit of a caddy to McCaffrey somebody to take 8 10 12 touches a game off of his plate so we're not not that he appeared to be exhausted by the end of this season he was awesome um he was plainly yeah. awesome in the Super Bowl he's a great you know he's a transcendent player as as good as it gets at the position but I mean, you, you can only you can only endure so many seasons of 400 touches at that at that spot. Um, but, you know, again, in the year ahead, which is probably all we should really focus on as NFL fans, because um, it's such a chaos league, y- you know, at, they're probably all back. I thought, again, like Purdy just turned 24. Um, right. So I, I feel like nobody should make any, should be making any like just 
declarative, this is what he is and he'll never be any better um, sort of statements on him. I, mm -hmm. I do think, you know, they needed to try to, I don't know, if they had full belief in Brock Purdy, perhaps they give him more of an opportunity at the end of the first half. They didn't. Um, that was that was a little bit disappointing, but man, I, I thought he showed a lot. I thought he showed a lot in the in the biggest moments. Didn't hit every throw, but again, overtime for him, I thought was really impressive. Um, and he's he's so young. He's he's only twenty four years old. He's he has old man vibes, so maybe we don't realize how young he is. But um, you know, that's still a developing player. Um, so I I don't know. Lot lot to be lot to be enthusiastic about. But of course, I understand that they're feeling wrecked today and they're feeling as if, you know, Kyle Shanahan maybe isn't it. But I'm 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 here to tell you, I feel like Kyle Shanahan is it. I feel like he wins Super Bowls down the road. And um, there's I don't know they, the, why on earth would they not be among the favorites next year? Certainly the favorite in the NFC. Yeah, that's that's the thing is, I think they're probably the best team in the NFC still like they're. They have about three million over the salary cap, but again, I mean, there, there are ways they can wiggle around that. You know, um, we'll we'll see, man. Uh, it's just how long is this core going to stay together? I think we probably have like one more year uh, in in two thousand twenty four. Which, like you said, that's probably all we should care about because, like, how long is any of this going to last for anybody? Yeah. Um, that's a fair question across the league. But I just think this is such a special and unique. This year was such a special and unique moment because you got that leap from Ayuk where, you know, a 1300 yard receiver on 101 targets or whatever. You got George Kittle averaging the most yards per target of his career. Purdy is the most efficient quarterback in the NFL. Um, like I said, it's just it's hard to just count on that rolling over alone. Yeah. 